What's up people, it's me Theo. Hope you guys are doing great in quarantine. If you're bored, you know what to do. Go watch my videos, subscribe. So, in this video, I'm gonna be replacing the thermal paste on my laptop. It's this tough FX504. There will be another video on a laptop soon. Subscribe. By the way, today's video is gonna be a proper tutorial and there's also gonna be benchmarks. So be sure to watch the whole video. Now before we begin tearing apart the laptop, have you guys ever wondered what is the use of thermal paste? And why do we need to replace them? Now I'm sure most of you guys already know, but I'll explain it again, just in case. A thermal paste is a paste that is thermally conductive. You might think that the surface of a processor and heatsink is flat, but microscopically, it's not. It looks more like this. So what does this mean? The gaps between them is hindering the conduction of heat. So to solve this, you put a thermal paste between them to fill in the gaps and help conduct the heat. Now you don't want to put too much thermal paste or too little. If you put too much, you'll just make another gap. And if you put too little, you're not filling enough of the gap. Now you need to replace thermal paste every now and then because thermal paste dries out. And when it dries out, it doesn't conduct heat that well anymore. Now as to how often should you replace it? It all depends. It depends on the type of thermal paste you use, how you apply it, how often do you use your laptop or computer, many factors. But basically, if it gets hotter than usual, it may be time to replace your thermal paste. Like mine, which has been two years and it's getting hotter, way hotter than the first time I bought it. Alright, it's time. Time to tear open the laptop. Before you get your hands on your laptop, wash your hands. Wash it. You don't want to get your laptop infected. Alright? Just kidding. You don't have to. But wash your hands. Keep your loved ones safe. But I love my laptop. Then wash your hands, bruh. First, open the screws. With a screwdriver, of course. You know how to do it. But be careful. There's long screws and also short screws. Don't mix them up. I suggest using a magnet to keep them in place. Next, pry open the laptop carefully. Next step is very, very, very important. Plug off the battery. You don't want to short circuit your motherboard, all right? Now press the power button a few times, and there we go. The patient has fallen asleep. You can proceed with your surgery. Now open two screws on each fan, three screws on the processor, and three screws on the GPU. Then take it off. Oh yeah, I forgot. Lock off the fans. Now I'm sure your fans are probably dusty, so clean it off. As you can see here, the thermal paste is already dry, even in just two years. It's time to replace it. Now clean off the old thermal paste on the heatsink and processors using alcohol and tissue. Now I do not have any alcohol, so I just used a hand sanitizer, but I made sure that the active ingredients is only ethanol, 70% ethanol, so I should be safe. Now it's time to put on the new thermal paste. My thermal paste of choice is the Kingpin KPX. Why you may ask? Well, that thermal paste is used in extreme overclocking and I've also seen reviews. The Kingpin KPX is very 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 slightly better if not similar to the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. But in my country, with the same price of Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, 
you get 0.5 grams more. So it's a no-brainer choice. I might actually put too much, but it's a thin layer. I don't know. I don't know if it's too much or not. Now put back the heatsink and tighten the screws little by little and move on to the next one. You tighten a little and move on to the next one. You don't screw in just one because there will be air gaps and the thermal paste won't spread well. Just put it all back together and you're done! Alright, time for benchmarks. Now there's more to it than just graphs, so listen to my explanation. By the way, each test is done for 3 repetitions and the ambient temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. Starting off with Cinebench R20, as you can see there is quite a bit of difference in the score. Now let's move on to the temperatures, the more interesting part. Please keep in mind, these temperature graphs are maximum temperatures and they do not run at this temperature all the time. As you can see, it only reached a maximum temperature around 88 degrees. This is because Asus designed this laptop start throttling at that temperature. But here's the thing, in the first few seconds, it runs around 30 watts, then it spikes up to 60 to 70 watts. Towards the end, it goes back down to 45 watts. Before replacing the thermal paste, it pretty much runs at 88 degrees almost the whole time. But after replacing the thermal paste, it runs around 70 to 75 degrees most of the time. 82 degrees is just the maximum, it doesn't run at that temperature most of the time. I wish Cinebase would allow my laptop or my processor to just run at 50 or 60 watts for the whole test. The score would be way better and the laptop is thermally capable anyways. For Cinebase R15, there's not much score difference because Cinebase does not allow my CPU to run at a higher TDP even though it's capable. For temperatures, it's the same with R20. The 88 degrees is because the laptop starts thermal throttling at 88 degrees and it runs mostly at 88 degrees before replacing the thermal paste. After replacing the thermal paste, it mostly runs at 70 degrees and it only hits 80 degrees at certain points. Moving on to the GPU benchmarks, we have Unigen Heaven. Here, I don't include any score graphs because it's pretty much the same, but as you can see, there's a lot of difference in temperatures. 12 degrees in the first run. That is a lot. And for our last benchmark, I ran Furmark for 12 minutes. As you can see from the temperature graph, before replacing the thermal paste, it reached a maximum temperature of 90 degrees, where it throttles. There's not much difference in temperatures. But if you take a look at the core clock, boom, there's a 200 MHz difference. And it doesn't throttle. I don't know why, but Furmark doesn't let my GPU run at 1700 MHz, even from the beginning of the test. But in Unigine Heaven, it runs at 1700 MHz for the whole test. In idle, the CPU is also 5 degrees lower. Yeah, the total pace also makes a difference, even in idle. In conclusion, replacing the thermal paste helps with both thermals and also performance. So be sure to replace it every now and then, especially if your laptop is getting hotter and also slower. Alright, that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to share it to your friends and click the like button three times. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one. 
Goodbye. Hey Google, turn off the camera. Yeah, okay. Turn off the camera now.